Hey folks, more trapping content coming. In this video, Corey Mosby, who is Idaho Game and Fish, he's a fur bearer biologist. He knows this stuff. And he's gonna talk to us about how you wanna be selective in what types of sets you make and make sure that whatever set type that you select, that it is as lethal and as effective as possible. So Corey, tell us what you got here. By the end of this video, you will have a better understanding of the responsibilities you have as a trapper when using lethal trapping sets. In addition to this video, please watch the other videos offered here. Overall, they're going to set you up with a solid foundation in some basic sets for a wide array of fur bearers, as well as the responsible use of traps and trap sets. We also encourage you to use traps that meet BMP standards for your target species. We have BMPs for every fur bearer species in North America, so you should be able to find something that fits your needs. Remember, these videos are meant to provide you with a solid background, but are not everything you need to know. Trapping regulations vary widely by jurisdiction, so please review your state, tribal, or provincial specific regulations before setting any traps. These specific regulations have been crafted to best fit the needs of your area. In this session, we'll discuss and demonstrate the importance of responsible use of lethal trap systems, which can include body grips, footholds, and snares. Even after watching these videos, please consider taking a trapper education course in your area. First off, it may be mandatory, and even if it isn't, these classes are often taught by local instructors that will help you with the basics of trapping, as well as how to navigate the rules and ethics of trapping in your area. If a trapper education class isn't available in the right place, see if your state or province has an online course. If not, then consider looking into the Association of Fish and Wildlife's online course. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to make selective lethal sets for beaver using a body grip and then a submersion foothold, raccoons with a body grip cubby, weasel with a foothold as a body grip, and red fox with a snare. Large body grip traps are often only allowed in water and can be highly selective for beavers when 50% or more of the trap is underwater. This technique avoids most other animals and if you shorten and offset the triggers, it helps in avoiding other semi-aquatic species such as mink, muskrat, and even river otter. Foothold traps on a submersion system for beaver are also highly selective. By setting a foothold correctly in 12 inches of water, a beaver will still be caught by the hind foot while drastically reducing the likelihood of all other species because of the depth of the water you set it in. While this set may feel like a bit of work at first, it's really effective on beaver while avoiding virtually all other species. On dry land, mid-sized body grips like the 160 or 220 are a great tool and can be a selective set when used for raccoons or fisher in a restricted opening and recessed cubby. By setting in a recessed cubby, this will avoid most other animals that are reluctant to enter such a tunnel or confined space. Also, using a sweet bait versus a meat bait can also minimize non-target interest. Like we mentioned before, be sure to check your local regulations on body grips on land, as well as the use of bait. Even the smaller body grip traps like the 120 are highly selective due to their small size and a great tool for species like Martin. When trapping Martin, when you elevate the set well above the ground and use a small diameter leaning pole, the set becomes highly selective. Foothold traps, when used for the capture of weasels, become a lethal body grip device. With the use of an enclosed box with a small hole on one end, the system becomes highly selective for weasels, especially in the cold and snow. As described in another video, lethal snares are a very important tool in many parts of North America. You can minimize non-target captures and snares by setting on target species sign, altering loop diameter and height off the ground, and by using a breakaway device. When setting for red fox, you can avoid other larger, taller species by using a six to eight inch loop, 
set six to eight inches above the ground. When this set is incorporated with a breakaway device, this set can become highly selective. The breakaway device will allow larger animals to break open the snare and not affect the capture of the target animal. In addition to the actual trap sets in your areas and your area's rules, do the groundwork to understand your landscape. This means both on the ground scouting as well as talking with area wildlife biologists and conservation officers. They will have an understanding of not only areas you may want to avoid, but also some areas to focus your trapping efforts. Part of being selective with lethal sets is avoiding areas where high traffic and other user groups or non-target species could make a negative interaction more likely. Just because it's legal does not mean it's ethical. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Remember, lethal devices, whether they're foothold sets, body grippers, or snares, are important tools, and they can be used safely on the landscape. It's just that using them comes with a serious responsibility. When you go to use this approach in the field, always be aware of not only your area's regulations, but also strive to be a responsible, ethical trapper.